from this one patristic uh, channel. This like person in the video saying about the person nature distinction that he was quoting a saint saying that all heretics refuse to make that distinction or fail to make that distinction, right? That all Christians who believe in the hypostatic union think the osis is possible because the hypostasis of God is the person experiencing human nature, like human death. I say human death is separation of human soul, human body, which is the experience of death within human nature itself, and not God. You people think God is the one experiencing human death via a union, but it was never God who died, but the human nature of God. If Dios is, isn't possible because of the God Son, that He's not a human Son, which is needed to restore the union with God via the death of a true human Son. And this other person was saying this, as far as I understand, because he was responding to me, this other guy, like, like he was trying to help me, and he says, uh, as far as I understand, the divine essence itself, if this is what you mean by God, does not die or stop existing. Orthodoxy obviously does not teach that the divine essence never ever died or perished. However, Christ being both fully divine and fully man, without separation, who eternally receives divinity from the Father, underwent death. He didn't just undergo death for us in merely human nature, right? But while in both natures, our Lord is not just God walking around in a human skin suit, but he literally is God who became a human being, the Anthropos. If the second person died only in his human nature, then not only would this suggest Nestorianism, but our death would not be transformative for our resurrection. It says, he says, Christ deifies human nature by divinity, not by human flesh. This is how the hand of death was broken, because Hades could not possibly contain God. And I responded to him with, except God doesn't become the man, but instead becomes the God of the man via a union with the man's nature, so no, he isn't the man, the person who experienced human nature. That would be a confusion of the person in nature, right? That's what I was saying. Because they call the person God, but then they talk about his human nature. So they mention God person and human nature, and God and man, right? God and human nature are two distinct subjects, different properties, totally separate natures. So it's not just a matter of confusing person with nature, like individuals, right? Particular persons, human persons, versus universal human nature, right? That's why I said that uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that you said the person was God and experienced human nature, two different natures. Like God and man are two different natures, basically. And so that's what I was speaking about, I guess, it wasn't clear. And I was speaking to this person. And I told him, uh, except Christ as God, the Son cannot deify human nature because he isn't the human Son. Uh, God the Son is literally the problem since he cannot be the man in a sense of being the suffering God because he isn't the human hypostasis. Uh, God is God in both natures. So it never applies to God in either of his natures, that which is the man's suffering, his temptations, his death, right? So God isn't deifying human nature by experiencing it because he cannot. I said, that's you, uh, I said, I told him that you need a human son, like Adam, but you don't have one. That's why you still have an historian, historianism, right, with a human son, Adam, and a trinity, with God, the Son, and Adam, right, double sonship. Because you talk about the how I said that in the Genesis account, right, where Adam has a union with God, right, the Trinity. But he is a human person. In, in the book of Luke, he's called the Son of God, Adam. That's why I say he's a human son, not just a, a true human nature. And then they have uh, God, Father, God, Son, God, Holy Spirit, right? Because he has a union with the Trinity, because he walks with the Word, right the tree of life or so and so that's why i said that that would be a, like almost like quaternity because you have four persons in the trinity or something like that and then that that what quaternity is because of the double sonship or yeah double sonship because you have god the son jesus there and then you also have 
the human son, Adam. And so that's why I felt like it causes that quaternity, is that double sonship thing. And how they're ascribing all of these human sayings to the deity when, you know, the, the, my position is that the fall didn't happen because God and human nature fell. You know, the fall happened because uh, the human son broke the union with his, with his disobedience. And so by default, you cannot have a recapitulation, deification, or a restoration of human nature because you make the deity the one that has to be faithful in his human nature. When it's really the man that has to be faithful to God, having an unbroken union, not like not broken by sin, right? Disobedience. This is why Jesus has no sin, right? That's the whole purpose of undoing the disobedience of Adam. That's why I said in proper context, Jesus should be a human son, a dwelling place for God, even born of God. Then it's a patristic guy, but it in. He says not to be rude, but I think you need to work first on your writing and then study theology a bit more. The concept of a human son is completely unintelligible. Also, from what little I can make out of what you have written, so you seem to fall into Nestorianism. Moreover, you seem to have the exact confusion that the person in the video was pointing out concerning the distinction between nature and persons. Yeah, but hold on. First of all, like, like I get, like, yeah, okay, like I get, I'm kind of like incoherent. I'm trying to work on that, like, to be more intelligible, right? Like, uh, sometimes I ramble. It says I fall into historianism, but the reality is, is that the reason why I make the distinction between human subject and divine subject. Even if the man is born of divinity, I still have to make that distinction because it was still a type of man that was born. And so it's not that it is Nestorian, it is just biblical. Like, I just, like, you know what I mean? Like, like I'll read from the scriptures and then, like, I'll compare Cyril's and Aphema's and see how, like, Cyril actually goes against the Bible because he tries to make... He tries to make uh, the God and the man the same subject. And I told you that it's not possible to do that. Because that, that is another way of, from what I can see, it's like from, you don't have to agree with me, but I consider that another form of God in the likeness of man. Like a God in human nature. Um, and then continuing, he, he said to me, the second person of the Holy Trinity being fully divine takes on universal human nature, which refutes whatever silly idea you have about a non-theological term, a human son. Such that the two natures are fully united, distinct, yet not confused in the person and the inseparable. Therefore, the person of, of Christ enters death through his human nature. But because the two natures cannot be separated and because God is life, the person of Christ overturns death and has brought eternal life to all mankind since he has assumed universal human nature, which cannot be separated from his divine nature. The two that inseparably exist in the divine person, the second person of Trinity. And then he like asked me, where are you getting this heretical language from? And that the fathers and the councils never used these terms and phrases. Yes, they all say God became man. Go read the creed. Start off with also it's clear that you don't understand the notion of person and nature. Go read more theology before coming here and trying to argue heretical theology with everyone. And so that's why I said that uh, there are other ways to interpret God became man. Like, because the way they define it is that the hypostasis that is God uncompromisingly became man in a sense he has a union with the human nature which doesn't pass for a man. And then they want to say that because he's enfleshed, he can now experience human nature and argue, no, not if he is the pre-existent one, right? Not if he's God Almighty, he cannot. Not even in a man's nature, because that is what it means to be the God of the human nature. Because they're trying to say that they're the same, he's the same person. 
It's just not possible. Because God did not cease to be God. He even has his God nature unified to the human nature. And so that's why I tell this guy, like, all, all they have explained is how God became the God of the man, the human nature. And you'll see how none of the sayings apply to this person. Because he's not the man. And so they actually create a dual son. It's like one times one times one equals one. Equals one. one son, right, one person. And one God nature is God the son. One son and one human nature is human son. Because that's how they sound like. How he becomes a man experiencing human ignorance. But then they don't want to say that. They want to say, no, he, he did not experience human ignorance. He is always omnipotent or omniscient, right? But that, that is what's proper to a man, to experience all that stuff. And then, like, they go to great lengths about the day and the hour, how the Lord knows it, right? And so they, they understand the absurdity that God being ignorant because of a human nature or because of a union with human nature, right? I say they know it's ridiculous. And that God should be omniscient even in a human nature. Which means he cannot experience the human nature. The ignorance, the limitations, the death, the sufferings, right? The temptations of the man that he is in union with. I say to him, like, uh, how, how don't I understand the person nature distinction? When you have the person being God and the nature being man, like, that's also a problem. Like, that's why I told him, that's also a problem because... Yeah, there's human persons, individuals, distinction, that's what, that's what they always say, right? And then there's universal human nature, which is like mind, body, and soul. Every human nature has. I say, like, yeah, that can be a real human nature and all that. But that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that these people say that the person is a god. Uncreated nature, right? Then you have a human nature. Because I, I can say that Jesus is... A divine person, right? It just depends on what that means. Because it says that he's born, he's born of heaven. And we know that is a quality of being, a quality of life, quality of knowledge, right? Logos. Knowledge of God, life of God, right? Divine life, uncreated life. And that's why I'm trying to explain to this person, like, yeah, like, if, if he's a divine person, but a human person, then he has to be, like, his properties have to be raised to that kind of quality of being, this is why you have a virtuous man who knoweth the scriptures and has the fullness of God, is able to have the fullness of God in him, right? The Logos. Uh, he knoweth the scriptures, understands all that stuff. This is, this is not because he has human proper, like, I mean, God properties, like omniscience. I said that, that's why I said it just depends on how you define the divine nature. It's like knowing the thoughts of the Pharisees. Yeah, he bared, he bared witness, the spirit bared witness to him, right? His, bear, his spirit bared witness to him? Yeah, because the spirit can give you information. I know this from personal experience. Uh, like my mother, right? I lost my uncle. The, he was like a drunk. Uh, was in the hospital. Mother's, my, my own mother said that uh, she sensed it in her spirit, the spirit of God, right? That something was wrong. And so she calls all these hospitals. And this happened a long time ago. She calls all these hospitals because she she knows like my because I mean, we know like our uncle was a drunk, right? Because he died like a drunk, but he loved God, but he just could not overcome that. The spirit revealing to her right was true. Yeah, he was in the hospital because he was bleeding out. And so we did get like time to say goodbye to him. And I told him like you know you should repent. Because or she prayed to God for mercy and repentance, right? Because he, he was like conscience, but he was weak. He couldn't open his eyes, but he could respond a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I told him that. And then, you know, he died like later on that night. My mother was there. She held his hand. So that's one evidence of it. And then also, like, our pastor, our family pastor. He is, uh, our pastor was like, I haven't seen him in a while, but he's the non-denominational. And, you know, when, when that, that night when he passed, that my, my uncle passed, you know, my pastor shows up and no one called him, no one told him. He said that God told him. 
that would have happened. And he said that, that God had gone to pick up his son, right? In that moment, that's when like, my uncle died. And so that, that's why I told you that, is it possible for God through the Spirit to give people information, right? Things like that, yeah. But it doesn't mean they're God, man. Right? It doesn't mean that they have the properties of omniscience. You know what it means? So it's not really proof of this God, the Son. But anyway, like he asked, uh, I mean, uh, he, this guy right here, this patristic guy, like responded to me, he said, that your response tells me everything I need, to, I need to know about your understanding of person and nature. Like, why don't you tell me what church fathers and what works you have read on this issue? Have you read St. Cyril, St. Basil, St. Gregory, Palamas, etc.? Christ is and always will be a divine person and has both a divine nature and a human nature. Persons possess natures but the nature is not what makes them a person. I'm like, look, I, I read a bit of these people, these saints, but because they're so technical, because they're philosophically trained, I have to rely on these, these YouTube apologists to explain to me what they mean. And I, I trust that they, that they read them and they understand their own saints. That's why I come on here, ask these people these questions, and yeah, I just keep asking, like, what do you mean? It's like, I asked him, like, Christ will always be a divine person. You mean God, the hypostasis, right? Because they think he's the hypostasis of God, which is God nature unified to human nature, right? One person, two natures. And then, uh, and then he says that he descended to Hades and all that. And I've already been over this in my other videos, why you shouldn't really... You know, say that it's God person that descended it there. That's why I told you that it's better to say he is the human son. And keep him as that, not as this God man. That is really not from the Bible. Like I told him that the person of Christ is God, right? Tasted death through his human nature. So now the hypostasis of God, right? God the son or God the logos is in Hades where the human soul of a human son should be, right? And so that would be a Polynarian. Uh, the soul is the life you live, according to the Bible. I mean, this other Orthodox apologist said this, and it's true because it's in the Bible. And so the soul is the life you live, according to the Bible. Who is the human soul, the person that lived that human experience of human life, right? Who is that? Well, God apparently is that person, so he is the human soul then. Because if you say he is just present in a human soul, that is no different than saying that God is just present in his human nature, while this human nature is like praying, right? Like a man that prays to God, having God present in him, you know that God is not the one praying. It is the man that is praying, and that God is present there, just like the man experiences human nature, human sufferings, human sorrows, and God is co-suffering in the sense that he is present with him, right? And so he's like, I guess, co-suffering in a sense, but he is not the person who is going through the human experiences, but he's present in his sufferings, or so to say, because you can't really say that God experiences human nature because of a union with human nature. That defeats the whole purpose of being this uncompromised deity that is enfleshed in a man's nature. So that's why I told you that. What other way can you interpret? A, a God hypostasis, what is God nature unified to a human nature? The best way to interpret that is to say that, that he is the God of the human nature, of the man, right? And the Bible talks about how the Spirit of God dwells in you, that you are a temple of God, right? For God, your body, mind, heart, soul, right? And how God fills you and so you are your own person it is your human body but it also belongs to God all right because God fills it and so that's what I said it's like I cannot possibly be the same person and so 
this guy just responds to me. He just says, there are three divine hypostases that are eternal, yet distinct person. Hypostasis, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the Son gets his personhood. Hypostasis, not from the divine nature, which would be Adotheos, but the person of the Father. In addition, so he gets his person from the Father. In addition, and not to be confused with the personhood, hypostasis, the divine person, that is the Son of God, gets his divine nature, also from the Father, the monarchia, who is fully God in his essence. Therefore, whatever Christ assumes, takes on, and unites in addition, the incarnation he takes on with his divine person, without change or alteration to both his human I mean, I'm sorry, but to both his divine person and divine nature, hence Christ always remains a divine person, hypostasis, which is distinct from the hypostasis of the Father, even after the Incarnation. So this is all in the Council of Chalcedon, and, but that is my own entire point. Because they, they literally treat the Son of God as though he is the Spirit of God, the indwelling one, except they say he is God the Son, and he is the same person in both natures, which... I told you, if he is the same person in both natures, then he's God in both natures. And so the human nature, those experiences of that nature, never going to apply to him because he's God in both natures. And so in flesh, does that really change anything? That now God can experience human nature because he is in flesh. Yeah, even though this apologist, right, he just showed you that God undergoes no such change. And so, even in a human nature, he cannot experience it. Because through a union, right, he is the God of that human nature. He does not ever become the actual man. Or he is becomes the, where he can be the hypostasis of both natures. I'm like, you would literally be describing him almost like an historian. Where in my human nature, I pray to God, I have faith in God, I do the things that a man would do. But that would be like... I mean, that is no different than being a human son. Because he is the same person, remember? In the human nature. But you want to say, is God the son, not human son? Because he doesn't believe in it. And I say, if he's God the son in both natures, then he's God in both natures. Like, it absolutely is not proven. Like, I, this is why later on I asked them, if you want proof of this, why this doesn't work, just describe to me, explain to me, how does God experience the death of his human nature? which is, by definition, human death is separation of soul and body, and how that definition alone does not ever apply to God in either nature. Even if he is in union with a man's nature, I said this, this definition never applies to that hypostasis, nor to that hypostasis divine nature. And I said to him, well, Chalcedon is wrong, since it assumes the sun, assumed, right? It assumes that that the deity, right, of the human nature is God the Son, and assumes that the Son assumes human nature, right, like he took on a human body. That's so on when the Spirit is the hypostasis, that is God, right, who represents God, who is present with Mary at the Son's birth. And it says, so the, no, the Son that didn't assume human nature, uh, but is the dwelling place, the Son that would actually be like the, the human nature, nature with properties, like, he would actually be the dwelling place of God. So it wouldn't really be him that technically assumes the human nature. He would be the, the person, the human being. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, like Mary was. And I told him that you're only proven that the hypostasis of God in union with the human uh, makes that God, the God of the human being, human nature. Which is why God in human nature can never be the man, but only present in the man. If we are talking about like the persons. And this other guy butts in, he says, you have a human nature. Your person is distinct from your human nature. If it wasn't so, then all of human nature would be one person. So the person of Christ fully enclosed himself in humanity, being diffused and unified with the body, just as we are while still being fully divine in his personhood, but also fully human. I said, this is, you're only, like, okay, but this guy's only explaining how real his human nature is. 
but it's not really proving how exactly does this unchanging deity actually become the same person of that human nature because he doesn't like the human nature is real sure that suffers and dies it doesn't mean God is going to suffer and die and so can you really ascribe the experiences of the human nature to the same person that is God no like you can't ascribe it to God because he is not the same person as that human nature he did not become the human person and he cannot experience the human nature because he remained of God in his own nature even while you in union with the human nature and so naked suffering nakedly and flashed it doesn't work either way because he is still the same God and since his properties still apply in both natures the properties of God because he's never without his properties and he just says that I sound incoherent and it's hard to make out what you believe or what I'm saying I mean he just calls me delusional that's why I said that some of these people are just disrespectful I just told them yes except I'm human person which is like human nature with human properties is what I'm telling this person and so and not the person who is God right I am not God nature with God properties God person so the deity of my human temple right my human nature is never without its properties like the God that fills me did not become me did not change but is within me and so that's why I told you that at no point in time can this ever change like all of a sudden he starts feeling what like I'm being tempted by, right? Like I end up dying. It doesn't mean it's going to, that God is going to die with me. Like literally, you know. So God in me doesn't suffer my human sufferings, right? Human death, human passions. But is the person that guides, provides, and manifests the divine nature through me. So I am the, the hypostasis that experiences both natures. Uncreated life, divine life, right? God and human life, created life. And so, I would technically be the suffering God if God were in me and I was in his form and I represented him and all that. Yeah, I would be the suffering God, technically. It wouldn't be God in me, literally suffering. He would be present with me in my sufferings, co-suffering in some sense, right? I said that, uh, this is the proof that the hypostasis of the suffering God is the human one and not God himself. The man experiences and manifests both natures of divine and human god does not since he is uncreated and not created right because god god is only one life right divine life uncreated life and like how in the bible all these prophets and stuff even jesus included they, they do these miracle things they miraculous things right like moses turns a staff into a snake jesus turns water into vine so men by faith Having a union with God do manifest a dual nature, but they're not dual persons because the nature of the divine comes from the distinct hypostasis of God, who is not the same hypostasis of the person of the human nature. So I told you that there is a biblical double subject Christology. And this guy just tells me I sound insane. I just tell him, why don't you actually prove what I asked? You know, I, I said, can, can you at least prove God experienced human nature? And the patristic guy just butts in, like, he's not trying to be rude, but he just says that I'm just embarrassing myself. I don't know what I'm talking about, that I'm crazy and all that. And uh, and I just told him that, yeah, I think uh, I've had enough of your nonsense. That's basically how I ended it, because he just keeps complaining about you. You're, I'm too incoherent and too ignorant, but whatever.